Hello, this is Colin with Maker Farm. In this video, we're going to show you how to assemble the magma hot end um, that comes in a kit. First thing you're going to want to do is grab, of course, your magma hot end. It's going to come with a little accessories bag that has some more wires, things like that in there. Um, you're also going to get just some hand tools. Um, and then this one, you can um, crimp things, but I'm going to solder items onto this. It just makes it a whole lot easier and quicker to assemble the hot end this way. So, all right, first thing that you're going to do, if you open up your magma hot end, we'll show you a couple things. This is the actual magma hot end. Um, everything screws apart, but you're going to want to make sure that everything is nice and tight together. We have a fan. Since the magma hot end is all metal, you're constantly going to have to have a fan blowing on on this. And the part that we're trying to blow on is this upper aluminum block here. If you don't have a fan always blowing on this block, um, when you put your filament in, it's going to heat up up here and then it's just going to jam. So we're going to make sure that we have the fan. It's going to be pointing right here and it's always going to be on. You're never going to shut it off while your printer is on. Um, we also have our mount. This is all aluminum mount. Um, it slides into our hot end like this so that we can mount it to our extruder block. We have our ceramic heater. And then we also have our thermistor. To start, we are going to wire up our thermistor. So in your kit, you're going to see a cable. It's going to be marked as therm, and that's for thermistor. And you're going to see a small PTFE um, sleeve. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's really small. And then you're also going to get some heat shrink tubing. And at this point, all we do, there's already some leads. The leads are already stripped. I'm going to take off just a tiny bit more of that insulation so that I can make a good solder joint. You can open up your bag for your thermistor. Go ahead, take your thermistor sleeving. I just fold it in half and I cut it right in half. So we have two equal length pieces. Sometimes when you cut them, it kind of squishes the little hole that we're going to try and push the leads into. So I just use my cutters to open that back up. Okay, now I'm going to take my thermistor and basically there's two leads and I'm going to put a sleeve on each each of those little legs. Just like that. Okay. And what I'm going to make sure and do is bring that sleeving all the way up. I'm going to make sure it contacts the glass bead completely because we don't want that sliding down. Okay, now you're going to take your heat shrink tubing. I'm just going to cut that in half. Take my thermistor wire. I'm going to go ahead and put one on the black wire, one on the red wire. And now we're ready to connect these. So I make sure that sleeving's all the way down. Just bring them up here together. And I'm just twisting them together. Give them a good mechanical connection. And cut off the excess little thermistor lead I've got there. Do the same thing here. The most critical thing when you're doing this is make sure that high temperature sleeving is all the way up. If it slides down, you've got bare wire of that thermistor and it's going to be mounted to the nozzle, the brass nozzle which can just make it ground out. That uh, doesn't make it very easy for getting good readings, okay? So now that I've got those twisted together, all I'm gonna do is just take my soldering iron, a little dab of solder on those. So now it's all soldered together. Just gonna lay those Connections flat. Put my heat shrink tubing on top of it. And then I'm just going to use a lighter to heat it up. Shrink that tubing on it. 
Okay, so there is the fully assembled thermistor and the thermistor cable. The next one that we're going to do is we're going to put together the fan. So your fan is going to come with a little connector at the end. We don't need that. So we're just going to cut that off. Do the same thing here. I'm going to strip some of the wires so that I have enough wire to solder on. And then you've got about a meter of this red and black wire. We're going to do the same thing there. I'm going to strip off some insulation on both sides, both ends. Just like that. Now we're going to take our other heat shrink tubing. This, when you get the heat shrink tubing in this kit, it may come um, as one continuous length and you'd cut it up in four pieces. The one I have at this point, it's just um, two tubes, but basically you'll have three quarters of an inch or an inch of heat shrink tubing um, for each of the four connections. So I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing on both of those wires. Take my wire here. I'm just going to put black to black red to red. When you're doing the thermistor, it doesn't matter which one is connected to which fan it does. If you plug it in the wrong way, it just, I guess depending on the fan, some fans will go backwards. Other fans, if you plug them in the wrong way, nothing will happen and it just won't turn. So I'm going to twist those together and then just do the same thing. I'm just going to put a little solder on those connectors connections just like that do the same as before just lay those connections flat so I can slide my heat shrink tubing on top and then we're just going to shrink those tubes down just like that okay so now I have my fan connected to my wire but I still have at this other end I've still got these bare wires. I'm just going to twist them together on themselves. And then I'm just going to just tin them. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on those wires. And that just keeps them together so they don't come off. That's going to make it easier when we're actually connecting it to our electronics. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your hot end. You know, Make sure everything's nice and tight on it. You've also got a ceramic heater. This is a 12 volt ceramic heater. Um, at least right now we're shipping 12 volt ones. We may give it an option to do 20, 24 volt in the future. Um, but you'll take the ceramic heater and you're gonna take your thermistor. The first one that we're gonna do, you'll see in the brass nozzle, there's going to be a little hole. It's probably extremely hard to see in this video. But all you're going to do is you're going to take that little thermistor and just kind of wiggle it around until it pops right into that hole in the nozzle. I don't think the camera's going to focus for that. But Okay, so we're going to get that. Um, then what you're also going to do is get your heater cartridge, and it's going to slide in just like that. I usually like to put it in halfway through. And then just take a roll of cap on tape. And all we do, I'm going to just put some around the wires of our thermistor and our ceramic cartridge just to keep them together. And then I'm also going to wrap it around the ceramic cartridge. And what I like to do is do a loop around one end of the ceramic cartridge. And then I'm going to bring it up and kind of just wrap it right around where that thermistor goes. Wrap it around the other leg of the ceramic cartridge bring it back over. So basically I'm doing a figure eight. 
And what this is going to do, it's going to keep the ceramic cartridge from moving, and it's also going to keep that thermistor from being able to come out. So it may be kind of hard to see, but I have just looped it around, holding my thermistor in there. And if the thermistor hole is in a different location, you can just, you know, wrap it around your nozzle as well to keep that in there. Okay. Okay, the last thing that we have to do um, is just basically connect everything and plug everything together. So if you get, um, I'll show you on one of our extruder blocks. On our extruder, we added two little holes here. Those are for some M3 bolts. And basically, you can use that to mount your fan. So basically, all you would do is you would get your fan, just put some bolts in there, and then basically, you can put it right on here and tighten it down in place. And then that's going to tighten it to your extruder block so that it blows directly on there. Um, also, if you get your mounting plate and your hot end, basically if you put your hot end in the bottom of your extruder, you can basically then take this plate and slide it on, and then your bolt holes are going to get all lined up. Let's see if I can get one of these screws in here so you can see. exactly what that fan is doing. There we go. So you can see you probably should have the fan wires exiting this side here. But then basically all the fan is doing is it's blowing or sucking air directly off of this block right here. And you can make some fancy ones that you can print out and do that. But just to get you guys up and printing, this is the quickest, easiest, and most reliable way of doing that. Okay? So then what we still have to hook up is... I'm just going to show you how to do this on ramps. If you do it on any other electronics, um, Gen 6, printer board, things like that, you'll probably have to add some connectors, uh, Rambo you can just plug it directly in. But basically for our thermistor wire, it just goes on our ramps onto T0. For our resistors, or our ceramic heater, that just goes, I think it's on D. I should have paid attention. I think it's on D8, I wanna say. I'll double check that. And then for our fan, since we always want this fan running, um, you can change your firmware so that D9 uses a fan, but we want this fan always on. When the print is done, we want it on. When the printer's um, heating up, we want it on. So all I do is I connect it to the positive and negative right here of where, you, where it goes to your five amp connection of your power coming in. So basically, if your power supply's on, the fan is on which is good because then um, we don't have any jams in our hot end. Um, if you do have jams in your hot end, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, basically, if it heats up, all you'll have to do is you'll pull back the little idler, pull your filament off, cut off the bottom three inches, and then just put it back in. That's all you have to do. It's really, really easy. So um, that should be uh, everything. I just wanted to confirm that. So when you hook up your hot end, doesn't matter which one goes where, it will go into D10. So it's going to be that far one, farthest away from your power. Um, doesn't matter which one you connect to where. There's no positive, there's no negative. Same thing with your thermistor. It doesn't matter if you plug it in this way or if you plug it in this way. Either one of those is going to work. Um, so this is our, our new magma hot end. Um, it's a really great hot end. You can do higher temperatures, so you can do 
um, other materials like polycarbonate. You can do things that will go over that 235 centigrade um, temperature boundary that the J-head hot end has. Um, it also doesn't have any PTFE liner, so there's no problems with um, getting your liner jammed, things like that. Um, the only thing that you have to remember is you always have to have a fan on, like I said earlier, otherwise um, you'll, you'll have jams. So if you have any questions or comments, you can go to makerfarm.com. We have a contact us section there. You can email me with any questions that you have. Thank you for watching.